Hi guys, my name is Anna Maria. I'm very happy to see you on my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna answer a few of your questions because you ask me different things on social media platforms. And of course, I'm very happy to answer them here. Sometimes I don't manage to answer directly to you. So I thought that more people can make more use when I will answer these questions. So let's start. Question number one. What are the most beautiful places you visited in Ireland till now? So guys, it's very hard to say that there are more beautiful places and less beautiful places. Every single location has its own charm, its own vibe, its own beauty. This is why I can't say that there are more exceptional places and less exceptional places. What I really liked was Connemara the west coast of Ireland is so beautiful. It's beautiful because there are not many people living in there. The nature is untouched and it has a very special vibe, you know. So if you want to connect with nature, you can go to like have a drive in Connemara and it's so beautiful in there. You can feel that nature and it's like the brain gets to relax and forget about all the problems from the daily life. So I really enjoyed that. But there are loads of other beautiful places. I made a few videos about them. So I'm going to leave the links to those videos in the description. Is it hard to move to Ireland from a different country? So um, it depends, of course. So if you're moving from an EU member state, of course, that's much easier. You just move and that's it. You know, you move, find the rent, find the job and um, enjoy your life. That's generally it. If you're coming from a non-EU country, of course, it's a bit more difficult. You have to make those kind of visas like study visa, work visa. So, of course, that will require a bit more effort and everything will be a bit more expensive for you. Like, for example, even uh, getting your visa, you have to pay some money. The education would be a bit more expensive because everything is cheaper for EU students. So, yeah, it's a bit more difficult but it's always possible. Many people do come to Ireland and they study masters and then they just get a two years uh, work visa, work permit, and they stay here for two years and then they find a job that sponsors their visa and um, then they happily stay in Ireland and they can apply to the Irish citizenship and everything is okay. Of course, it sounds very easy, but um, yeah, it's not that easy, but it's absolutely possible. So yeah, it's it's it depends where you're coming from. Cool. So study part-time. Can I get a study visa in Ireland? So there was somebody who wanted to move to Ireland and study part-time and work full-time. If you ask me about visa, most likely you are not an EU citizen. So in this situation, unfortunately, you will not get a study visa. To get a study visa to Ireland, you must be enrolled in a full-time course from an eligible university. And I will mention more about this in the e-guide that's coming very soon. And you'll be able to read about all the eligible universities and what a study visa can do for you. If you are an EU citizen, then of course you can move to Ireland, you can do whatever you want. You can study part-time, work full-time, do whatever you want. Let's move on. Are you Polish? Many people ask me if I'm from Poland because most likely my accent sounds similar to people from Poland. I'm not from Poland, I'm also from Eastern Europe, from Moldova. I'm sure if the majority of you know this, but I thought I would still answer this question. The next question, how can I find a student accommodation in Ireland? So you can find student accommodation. I suggest going through Amber student. I will leave a link to Amber student website in the description to this video. So you can click on that link. You can ask someone from Amber student to help you with finding accommodation, student accommodation. I'd say this is one of the easiest options because the company Amber student will find accommodation for you. They will organize everything. They will arrange everything. You'll be living with other students, which is great, rather than you going on to like daf.ie or rent.ie and trying to find accommodation from abroad you know, and then you have to make sure you avoid scams because in the past time, loads of scams are happening in Ireland, unfortunately, with rents. Yeah, there have been some um, personal data leak. Um, so yeah, there have been a few scams happening in the past year or two. So I suggest that the best option for you is to get accommodation from Amber Student. And again, check the link in the description to this video. And the guys from Amber Student are very lovely and they will be able to help you and explain everything to you. And they will offer you great, great service. Now, a very, very interesting question. Very often you ask me, why did you close the comments to the downsides of Ireland video. I get this question very, very often. So I'm gonna tell you why I did it. So when I filmed that video, it became very popular. It has more than 200,000 views while I only have like 8,000 subscribers. So of course, it's very, very popular. And as every 
person who makes videos on YouTube and gets a popular video knows that there are loads of negative comments to those videos, you know? And this is how the video gets more popular, based on those negative comments. And of course, I make much more money when I have loads of comments. And uh, for a while I was like, yeah, grunge, whatever, more comments, more money for me, more subscribers, because that video is bringing a lot of subscribers to me, more people coming to me, so that's amazing, you know? Then the lockdown started and I stayed at home, I had more time to stay at home, I was isolated from everyone, and I started to mentally feel not really good. And of course, I totally understand that people were the same, they had more time to watch videos, to write negative comments, and I started to get loads of loads of negative comments, and unfortunately, I it started to affect me a little bit. Nothing was happening in my life, I was just simply staying at home and working from home, and I was isolated, and that's it, you know? So I felt that it starts to affect me a little bit, and I don't really like it, and I don't really want to read those comments, so I just switched off those comments, because I care about myself, I care about my mental health, I understand that not everyone agrees with me, and that's absolutely fine. Some comments were really nice, you know, like some comments were very lovely, being like, look, Anna, I actually do not agree with you um, in, on this point and on this point, and I was like, hmm, actually that makes really good sense, maybe I'm not fully right, you know, so you made me think, like some of you made me think about different things, and that's grunge, you know. And in that video, I looked at everything from just one point of view, of course. Things can be discussed from different points of view. And um, yeah, I understood that I don't want to have those negative comments in my life, and I don't know who those people uh, who are commenting. I mean, I don't mind if like extremely smart, terribly rich um, millionaires are commenting on my video, you know, please comment on my videos if you're extremely smart and terribly rich and you are a great person. But I don't know, I don't like every single person in this world and I don't want to connect with every single person in this world, same as other people. Not everyone wants to talk to me, not everyone wants to connect with me. So this is why I closed those comments and I was like, whatever, I, 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 I just don't want to read those comments. I can turn them on now because my life is almost back to normal, so of course they will not affect me anymore. Now, people ask me, what is your workout routine? So, I go to stretching, I go to pole fitness, because I love pole fitness, I'm trying to go to the swimming pool and swim a little bit more, because loads of doctors told me that swimming is very good for my body, for my mental health, for all my, for all my muscles, and they told me that if you don't want to swim a lot, just go and stay there in the swimming pool, and I was like, yeah, fine, I'll go, and I am really enjoying going to the swimming pool and going to the gym when I have time. So gym, pool, stretching, swimming pool. Cool. Can you tell me some information about Ireland? So very often I get different kinds of questions and people ask me about their situations. And I totally understand that when I make videos, they are not individually tailored to every single person, to every single person's situation, yes? And of course you want to get that more individual um, approach. This is why I decided that if you want to ask me different kind of questions, if you need an individual approach, then please subscribe to my Patreon, and there you can ask me questions, and then I will answer your question in a live video, or I will just make a post and answer your question tailored to your needs, okay? And I'll make sure that you get the answer that you are looking for. Or if you want to talk to me, you can book a private consultation, I'll be very happy to spend um, 50 minutes with you, and talk to you, and give you advice, and tell you what you can do in your own situation. There was a very popular question as well about bargaining in shops in Ireland. So many people uh, were a bit surprised, were like, Anna, what are you talking about? You can't really bargain in shops. Okay, so I will try to explain that clearly, so you properly understand how you can bargain in shops, okay? When you go to buy bread, milk, you can't bargain, you can't go to Tesco or Lidl and bargain, okay? <laughs> and be like, oh, give me that bread for like one euro, it's 150, but give me that for one euro, I'll buy it for one euro right now from you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do this? No, 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 not at all. Um, when I made the video and I told you that you can bargain in shops, I mentioned that you can bargain for TVs, fridges, washing machines. So when you go to electrical stores like Harvey Norman, DAD, Power City, then I've noticed that people do bargain, which is very strange, but they do. They would be like, oh, uh, that TV is 220 euro. Give me that TV for 200 and I'll buy it right now. <laughs> 
This is what you can do. I personally do not do this because I find this not respectful towards the salesperson and I used to be asked those questions very often and I used to hate them. If you want, you can try your chance and if you go to buy yourself like an electrical something, you can ask for a better price. I know a situation, a story when I went into a Harvey Norman store and there was a salesperson and he was like, you know, Anna, do you see that man? He's actually buying an Apple iPod, iPhone, Apple Watch, and something else I think and uh, he is staying there and he's waiting for me to make a price discount for him and he just is bargaining and I'm like and I was shocked like I mean you're buying Apple products Apple tablets watches iPhones I mean if you're buying Apple tablets you should be able to buy them right away if you can't afford them then just buy something cheaper you know so yeah so you can see people buying Apple products and bargaining and stuff like this it's not really nice uh, from the point of view of the salesperson, but people do this and this seems to be a widespread thing in here. But don't bargain for like bread and task or little, seriously. <laughs> Don't do this. I hope I hope you did not get me wrong. The last question. There was somebody asking me about the driving book. Unfortunately, I can't find that message right now, but somebody asked me about the driving book and they couldn't find it on the Essence website. I will see if I can find the link to the driving book and I'll put the link in the description to this video, okay? But if I cannot find the link uh, when I bought the book, the driving book from Essence, they did not sell it on their shelves. I had to go to the counter, yes, I had to go to the till and ask for the driving book because they had the driving book behind there on the till you know so it wasn't it's not like you can go to essence and just get the book you have to go to a salesperson and that salesperson will find that book for you if i find the link i'll leave the link in the description or if you guys find the link leave the link in the comments thanks a lot for watching this video i hope i answered some of your questions if you have more questions make sure to leave them in the comments i'm curious to know what you think about these kind of videos about q a's because very often i don't manage to answer your questions but i really want to answer them so I'm trying to do more content. This is some good content idea for me. Cool guys, I wish you all a lovely time of the day. Make sure to give this video a like, to subscribe to my channel and also to share my video with other people because my goal is to get 10,000 subscribers and then I'll be able to buy a new laptop to edit videos much faster for you. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.